Satan brought spiritual death. The entrance of sin the angels were created to be ministering spirits, but to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Hebrews 1 verse 13.14, they were not created to be rulers of any kind. Mankind, on the other hand, was given the right to rule over this world, and God said, Let us make men in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Genesis 1 verse 26, Satan is an angel and, therefore, was not given the right to rule. But he wanted to be like God, for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. Isaiah 14 colon 13 14, God is the king and so to be like God Satan needed a kingdom to rule over. Satan decided that if he could cause man to obey him, then he would become the ruler over man and therefore he would also rule over earth. We normally think of this act of rebellion as an act of stupidity on Satan's part, but really he had it figured out correctly. This is why we read that the serpent was subtle, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. Genesis 3 verse 1, the Hebrew word for subtle can also be translated as clever or wise. Adam and Eve became sinners and this rebellious nature has been passed on to every human being, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Psalms 51-5 The consequence of sin God told man that if he disobeyed God, then that same day he would die, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Genesis 2 verse 17, But Adam and Eve did not die that day because God wasn't talking about physical death. He was talking about spiritual death. Let's examine this closer. Man was created as a life with life, see study on the creation of man. After he sinned, man continued to be a physical life just like the animals, but he ceased to be spiritually alive. The spiritual life force that was given to him by God was removed. He continued to have a spirit essence, but it no longer had life in it. Because we were in the loins of Adam, this spiritual death is passed on to every human, for I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. Romans 7-9, this verse speaks of a time when we were alive without the law. There was only one period of time when there was no law and that was in the very beginning. As soon as God told Adam to not eat of the tree he had laid down the law. Adam was still spiritually alive at this point because he had not sinned. The I in the above verse is every human being. We are all spoken of as having been present back there in the Garden of Eden and when Adam sinned we all died spiritually, wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned, Romans 5:12. remember, the focus here is on spiritual death, not physical death, and you hath he quickened, who are dead in trespasses and sins, Ephesians 2 verse 1, this verse is saying that every human being is dead before they are saved. People cannot become saved once they have physically died so the only death that can be in view here is spiritual death. So, yes, it is true that because of sin physical death does exist as a result of the ground being cursed, Genesis 3 verse 17.18, but when God says the wages of sin is death, he is referring to spiritual death. As a result, all that is left alive is man's physical body and it is in that part of man that he is vulnerable to sin. Because the sin-prone part of man is all that remains we find that the Bible has ugly things to say about man. Our minds are darkened by sin, this I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, Ephesians 4 verses 17 through 18, our hearts are corrupt and evil, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Genesis 6-5, For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within, and defile the man. Mark 7 verse 21.23, We are slaves of sin, Jesus answered them, Verily, Verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. John 8 verse 34, 
Our greatest efforts are at best tainted with sin, but we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Isaiah 64 verse 6, In our sinful nature, we are desperately wicked, the heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked, who can know it? Jeremiah 17 to 9.